three days behind on posting this video, but but um, it says former scamster Melvin Delmar has died, and he made a he made a claim back in the '60s that he was in the Nevada desert and that he found a man in the desert, and he basically tried to claim that that he saved this man, and he claims that the man told himself told him that he that the guy was Howard Hughes. So he tried to claim that he tried to bullshit and say that how that he saved Howard Hughes from in another Nevada desert, which was never true. It says Melvin Earl Dunbar, born August twenty eighth, nineteen forty four, died December eighth of two thousand eighteen, was a Utah man who earned attention when he who earned attention when he claimed to have saved reclusive asshole business tycoon Howard Hughes in the Nevada desert in sixty seven and to have been awarded part of Hughes vast estate. And he was so close to getting 156 million, which is what he was requesting. Um, and he was trying to get Howard Hughes' house, and of course, they saw through the bullshit. And he did not get nothing. And they, um, it says, a Las Vegas jury determined in 1970 that the will that Dunbar tried to claim was, was legit, was proven to be a forgery, so he later got nothing, but they did make a movie called Melvin and Howard in 1980. While working at a service service station in Willard, Utah, Dunmar claimed Dunmar claimed to have discovered a shelved and lost man lying on the side of a stretch of U.S. Route 95, about 150 miles north of Las Vegas, Nevada, near Lita Junction. The man asked Dunmar to take him to the Sands Hotel in Las Vegas. Dunmar claimed that the, that only in the final minutes of their encounter did the man reveal his identity as Howard Hughes, and it was kind of suspicious when you hear this. After Hughes died in 1976, a handwritten will was discovered in the Salt Lake City, Utah, headquarters of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Though purportedly written by Hughes in 1968, the will had many strange discrepancies. It named Noah Diedrich as an executor, despite the fact that, that Noah Diedrich had left Hughes' employee on bad terms in the 1950s. The will left approximately $156 million to the Latter-day Saints Church, and although Hughes had employed many Latter-day Saint workers. He had never been a member of that particular church. The will left money to his to his two ex-wives, Ella Rice and Jean Peters, even though both women had alimony settlements that barred them from having any claims on Hughes' estates. The will was rife with misspellings, including misspelling the name of Hughes' cousin. It called Hughes the fl f famous flying boat that Hughes H4 Hercules, the Spruce Goose, a, a nickname that Hughes had, had hated. And it states that basically, um, okay, during um, Dunmar, whose inheritance would have been 156 million, had he gotten away with being able to fraud this, and and um, and if it wasn't basically discovered to be a forgery, claimed that he knew nothing about the will and told his story of picking up Hughes by the side of the road afterwards when authorities discovered Dunmar's fingerprint on the envelope. He said that a well-dressed man had left the will in the sealed envelope at Dunbar's service station. An enclosed note, Dunmar claimed he instructed him to deliver the will to the headquarters of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day States, which had also been left one-sixteenth of the estate. An investigation revealed that du that Dunmer's wife Bonnie had worked for a magazine called Millionaire that was distributed to wealthy Americans, and her, that her job had allowed her access to Hughes's memos and Hughes's signature. However, Bonnie denied forging the will. But the will was was ruled a forgery in 1978, and Dunmer received no portion of Hughes's estate. But no criminal charges were filed against him or his wife. In, in early 2005, retired FBI agent Gary Magnuson claimed to have found new evidence supporting Dun Dunmar's story. Magnuson stated that Hughes' closest employees remembered him entering the Sands Hotel early one morning in, De in December of 1967 and stated that he'd been picked up by a man named Dunmar in the desert. Furthermore, Hughes had purchased interest in mines located near the area where Dunmar had said, said he found him, and, had, and he had frequented a brothel near where Dunmar said he first encountered Hughes. And that's really about it there.